Good day, students. So today we'll be talking about moment and center of gravity. We all know that moment is the product of a force and the perpendicular distance of its line of action from the previous videos. But now I want to talk about this beam that is in equilibrium. You know, if you consider this to be a meter, a uniform meter rule, that means the center of gravity will be at the 50 centimeters mark. Now let us assume you decide to shift. So when you place it on this pivot, then it balances horizontally. What if you decide to shift this pivot to another mark? Let's assume you decide to shift the pivot to the 15 centimeters mark. Okay? Oh no, let me use 15. Let me use the 35 centimeters mark. Yes, let me shift the pivot to the 35 centimeters mark. So when I shift the pivot to this point, what happens to the meter rule? When I shift the pivot to the 35 centimeters mark, there will be there will be a resultant clockwise moment. Why? Because the center of gravity remains at the 50 centimeters mark. Hence, this is where the weight of this meter rule will be concentrated. So because there is no force on the other side to balance this force on the right hand side, there will be a resultant clockwise moment. So for you to balance this meter rule horizontally, you have to place a force on the left hand side. Okay, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here, anywhere on the left hand side. You have to place a force that will produce a resultant, um, that will produce a moment that is equal to the moment on the right hand side. What's the moment on the right hand side? The weight multiplied by the distance from here to pivot. It's clear, right? Now let us deal with this question, for example. When a load of 40 Newton is placed at the 15 centimeter mark, so when you place a load of 40 Newton, 40 Newton at the 50 centimeter mark, the balance point, that's the pivot of a uniform meter rule, shifts to the 35 centimeter mark. So the balance point is now here, when you have a load of 40 Newton here. Now you have to find the weight of the meter rule. How do you find the weight of the meter rule? The law remains the same. The total clockwise moment must be equal to the total anticlockwise moment. So you write here the total clockwise moment must be equal to the total anticlockwise moment. What's the formula for the clockwise moment? You always use them. F1 D1 is equal to F2 D2. Let me write this formula under the statement. So you always write it as F1 times D1 equal to F2 times D2. Where F1 is the force producing the clockwise moment. So in this case, F1 is the weight of the meter rule. And D1 is the distance producing the clockwise moment. In this case, distance is the distance from this force on the right hand side and the pivot. So this distance here is D1. Okay? The distance from, from this force that produces the clockwise moment, that's the weight, and the pivot, that's D1. What of F2? F2 is the force producing anticlockwise moment. That is your 40 Newton force. F2 is the 40 Newton. What is D2? This, D2 is the distance between the force F2 and the pivot. This distance is the D2. Let me use the black marker to distinguish. So the distance from here to here is the distance D2. What is F1? F1 is 40 Newton. What is, uh, sorry, F1 is the weight W. What is D1? D1 is distance from here to here, okay? So here you can see that D1, D1 equals to the distance here, that is from here to here, from the force to the pivot. So you do 50 minus 35. So your D1 is 15 centimeter. What is D2? D2 is distance from 35 to the 50 centimeters mark, okay? That's distance between the force F2 and the pivot. That will be 35 minus 15. That gives you 20 centimeters. Now we substitute these values into the formula. F1, F1 is the weight times D1 
D1 is 15 is equal to F2. F2 is the 40 Newton force load times D2. D2 is 20 centimeters. Now let's multiply. This means 15 W is equal to 4 times 2, 8, equals to 800. How you get W? W is equal to 800 divided by 15. And 800 divided by 15 gives us what? Okay, let's see. We can just do our own division here. 800 divided by 15. Here, we have 5. 5 times 15 gives us 75. Subtract, so if we left with 5, bring down 0. 50 divided by 15, we have 3. 5 times, 3 times 15, you get 45. The remainder is 5. Decimal points, add 0. Add 0. 50 divided by 15, you have 3. 3 times 15, 45. So it's the current decimal. That will be 53.33 Newton. That is the weight of the meter is 53.33 Newton. This is how you use an experiment. This is how you can use the experimented, uh, experimental method to determine the weight of an object. I hope this is clear. Okay, this is not very clear. So let me write it in a way that will be clear. So the weight W is equal to 800 the bill is equal to 800 divided by 15, and that will give us 53.33 Newton. 53.33 Newton. Now, what is the effect of moment and center of gravity? The effect can be felt in how the drone operates, how your differential drive mobile robot operates, and what happens when building collapse. What causes buildings to collapse? That is what I'm talking about right now. First of all, I want to focus on the drone. Look at your drone. Now, in the case of your drone, it has four propellers, okay? But let's focus only on these two, the one on the left and the one on the right. When you want your drone to hover, the force produced by these two drone, by these two propellers must be equal. The propellers are those blades that spin and produce the force. If you want your drone to, to, to flip, okay? Like you want your drone to rotate in, an, in a clockwise direction, okay? Or you want it to rotate in an anticlockwise direction. Then the forces produced by these blades will now be made to vary. Why do you allow the blade here to produce a greater force than the blade here? What happens? Then the moment from the clockwise moment will be greater than the anticlockwise moment then your drone will flip in a, in, yeah, the, the drone, your drone will flip in a clockwise direction. Let's assume here, it is producing a force of 200 Newton, and this one, let's assume initially, they are both producing forces of 200 Newton. Your drone will hover. But when you want it to flip, then you can increase the force on this side to 250 Newton, Okay, just for a very short period of time, then you can reduce this one to 150 Newton, just for the drone to flip. Okay, and after the flip, you return both of both drones to put, you return both blades to producing equal forces so that the drone can hover again. Okay? So this is the advantage of learning these mechanics, so that when it's time for you to produce a mathematical model that, um, that will run, in, that will determine the algorithm you write, okay? So if you're studying computer science, you have to produce mathematical models from first principle of physics, okay? Then you have to put this model into the algorithm, okay? Then you write the code, and you install the code in your microcontroller, okay? This, this, the, that's the relationship between the physics you're learning and um, computer engineering, okay, or computer science. Now, this can also be felt in your, your differential drive mobile robots, differential drive mobile robots, or your toy car. We can, we can only simply um, use a toy car to illustrate this. So, if your toy car, if both wheels are producing equal forces, 
the car will move straight, okay? But when you want it to turn, apart from turning the direction of the wheels, they will also produce different forces, okay? Let's assume both we are producing forces of 15 newton gauge. This was also producing a force of 15 newton. The, your, your toy car will move along a straight path. But when you want it to turn in, in a clockwise direction, what happens? You increase the force here, okay? You can increase this one to 55 newton, while this one might go up to 45 newton. What happens? There will be a resultant clockwise movement of the car. Now let's talk about buildings and why buildings collapse. Let's assume that during the construction, then you use a, a very big vehicle, like a tipper, for instance, to bring in sand. And then the driver of your car was not careful enough. And then, so you, let's assume you loaded this car with sand, okay, in order to deliver to your site. And the driver is not careful enough, and then um, while driving, he mistakenly hits this pillar, and this pillar got broken. What will happen? In this case now, there is a vacuum here that has been created because the pillars can be likened to the four legs of your table that gives your table support and keeps it standing. So once this, this uh, vehicle hits this pillar and it breaks, then there will be nothing supporting this side, okay? Consider it to be like this, okay? When you have um, when you have a beam, okay, let's just talk about a beam that is supported by two pivots. You know normally the center of gravity will be here, but these two pivots will keep the beam in place. But once you remove this one, what happens? There will be no force on the right hand side to balance it. So there will be a resultant clockwise movement. And this is what you have here. Okay, this part will just have a resultant clockwise moment. Okay, action and reaction are no longer equal because there's no reaction on this side. Okay, hence this side of the building will collapse and that will force the remaining of the building to go down. This I've talked about a vehicle hitting the pillar. What if nothing is hitting the pillar? The, bu the, the building is just perfectly the way it was. Can anything make the building collapse? Yes, something can make the building collapse. If the engineer that's, that uh, supervised this building, okay, the foreman will be not keeping an eye on every, everything that happened. And mistakenly, someone dropped, um, someone dropped a um, stick, okay, just a very small stick. Okay, though not um, so tiny, but little objects like stick, things that corrupt the integrity of a be of a pillar, they are sticks. Or another one is the sack that wraps that um, the sack in which the cement was bought. Sometimes they might be careless and allow the sack to go in. Things like this, this compromise the integrity of the pillars. So what? There is a defect here, and this point is weak. After some time, because of the load, the weight of the building, and the things you buy, your generator, your, your kitchen utensils, your chairs, the furniture, all of these have weights, okay? And this weight is the action. That's the weight of everything in the building. And it must be balanced by the reaction provided by each of these pillars. Okay, once the weight is too much for the pillar to withstand, the pillar will fail. And once this pillar fails, it forces the rest of them to, to collapse. And this is why buildings collapse. So everything you are doing is governed by mathematics and physics. And you have to ensure you don't make mistakes. Okay? So this is um, the importance of applying the knowledge you are learning in school into whatever you do in your future career okay so the next videos will just give illustration of drones that are flipping as a result of differences in the forces produced by the propellers thank you for listening do have a nice day